In 1999, Berkshire Hathaway managed to produce a positive gain in net worth of one half of one percent. That means that since present management took over 35 years ago, Berkshire Hathaway has realized a positive gain each and every year and produced an average annual gain of 24 percent. Including the years you ran the Buffett Limited Partnership, you have had a run of 48 consecutive years of positive gains in net worth without one single down year, producing a com compounded rate of return of almost 26 percent annually. I hope your question isn't going to be whether we can continue that, but go ahead. Do you have a question? <laughs> My question is, don't you think you could have ended the millennium with a bigger bang than one half of one percent? <laughs> well, I certainly wish we could have, but uh, the interesting thing about those figures, uh, actually the figures go back before that because uh, the, the very best period was, was pre the partnership days but because the amount I was working with was so small. But the, there's nothing magic about a one-year period. I mean, it's the way the measurements come out. We've, if you took all the half-year periods, for example, I'm sure, well, I know that there were a number that were down, you know, and, and there are going to be lots of years in the future, assuming I live long enough, that we, that we, we, will, have, we will have plenty of down years. It, 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 it's been a fluke to some degree that, uh, that we have not had any down years in terms of underlying value, that the stock has gone up and down uh, uh, in ways that are not related to intrinsic value a few times. But that, that is totally a fluke. I mean, we're not going to be up every day, we're not going to be up every week, we're not going to be up every month or even every year. Uh, and it's the fact that, you know, the, 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 the earth revolves around the sun and really is not totally connected to most business activities. Uh, uh, or the fruition of most investment ideas or anything of the sort. So uh, we, we, obviously, we have to report every year. And, you know, I, I, I care about the year, yearly figures in that sense. I don't really care about them totally as a measure of what we're doing. Uh, uh, and it, like I say, if we could have, uh, we were, we were the, the capital allocation job that I did in 1999 was very, very poor, and uh, um, it was partly because some of our our main businesses uh, did poorly. I mean, Coca-Cola and, and Gillette had bad years last year. They'll have good years over over time. Uh, I wrote a few years ago. It's interesting. I, I, I called their soft drink business and their razor and blade business as inevitables, and it, the truth is they've got a higher market share now than they've ever had in history. They're selling more units than any year in history, but certain other factors uh, hurt their business and therefore hurt their stock performance. But I would still call the soft drink, Coca-Cola's position in the soft drink business and Gillette's position in the razor and blade business, I would characterize them as inevitable, that, that they will, that they will uh, gain uh, share over time. Gillette has over 70% of the share of the blade and razor business in the world which is at, at measured by value you know that's an extraordinary share coke has 50 percent of the uh, soft drink business in the world that's well over a billion eight ounce servings per day a billion per day eight percent of those are for the account of berkshire so over 80 million eight ounce servings of soft drinks per day are being are being consumed by people for where the economic benefit comes to berkshire hathaway uh, in effect, we have if over six percent of the for Berkshire Hathaway's account of the blade and razor business in the world, and it'll and it'll go up. So I, I don't worry about the businesses in the least long term. They will have bad years from from time to time, and when they do, our performance will not look good in those years. Charlie. Well, it's been a very interesting stretch. Uh, one of the most interesting things about the stretch is that during pretty much the whole period, the company has owned uh, marketable securities in excess of its net net worth. And so you have this in extraordinary liquidity in a company that has uh, performed very well to boot. Uh, that advantage has not gone away, and, and in fact, it's been augmented. Give us reasonable opportunities 
and uh, we are prepared. Well, you've heard of what you're supposed to do now. We'll do the rest. Just give us the opportunities. (laughs) 